After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt, and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. Now that we have this bulkhead installed, we can go through and start adding our webbing. Um, what these are for is this area where the engine is going to be does not have a floor built into it. So it's not that double bottom and then that where you have throughout the rest of the boat. That double bottom really adds a lot of strength from side to side. Um, acts kind of as a frame for, for the boat. Since we don't have it in here because the engine has to sit lower, these will go along the side, along the hull sides, and that will give that back that strength through here. Um, what we'll end up doing is once we get those in place, then we can at least temporarily for the time being, or, or kind of roughly, cut out this bulk head and make it a ring frame then. So it'll be roughly 150 millimeters along the top, um, about 200 millimeters around the side. But what I'll do just today is I'll cut 200 millimeters all the way around, and then we'll trim that back later. The way the engine's gonna sit is the engine will sit back here, but the front end of it will stick past into this area a little bit. Reason why we're doing this is the original location for the bulkhead is here. We moved the bulkhead further forward to give us a bigger engine bay, bigger space there. Um, engine's gonna still sit in about the same location, but we just have more room to work on it. It's not gonna be tight along this bulkhead then. And what that's doing is that's just giving us that cut out there, so we still have access to do everything, um, to, to, to get through things like the alternator and impeller, the water pump, um, the belt, all that stuff will be accessed through this ring frame area here. And I'll have a nice place to work right there. <laughs> so that's the idea. Um, but we need to add back that strength of where this bulkhead is, and that's the reason why we put this in place. So today is to go through and find exactly where these things go, get them all propped up, and then tomorrow we'll probably glass them in place, and in the meantime, I'll cut out this piece. Kind of give me an idea of what that looks like now. Okay. Now, I'm just going to do that. Again, it's just a rough opening, but we'll end up measuring that down. So basically 200 millimeters, 200 millimeters, 200 millimeters, and I'm just going to currently cut it with the top of this. This will end up getting chopped down later on um, as to where we put the stringers for the engine mount and stuff. That That's going to change later, but just temporarily so I can cut this open. I'm just going to do a 200 everywhere. sure how far I'm going to drop it down and what kind of angle I'm going to cut in this. So just for a temporary, just to make sure I'm safe, we're going to cut it really, really high. Much easier to cut more off later than it is to add it back on. Right now. 
we have got some incredibly exciting news for you because there is an amazing company that we have partnered with and that is Vetus. We have been talking to them well, before the, before the, the container was... even arrived, before yes. we, I, like right when we placed the order, we started talking to them. Um, and the reason why we reached out to Vitas was on Elements, it was the basically the equipment manufacturer that never failed us. Like every single time we had any of their products from hatches to the, um, the exhaust system, uh, basically everything worked the way it was supposed to it was well built and I couldn't think of another company that has such a, a diverse catalog of things that we will need for this build that is Which I have uh, next to us here. everything is quality yeah it reads like a phone book this thing is huge and yep. these are all super quality products like Matt was saying when yep. we had it on the Illumina boat it was like one of the things we knew wouldn't fail on us. Yep. As you can see, my well-used catalog, yeah. this has been They've just come out with a new here. one, but yeah. yeah, this is the one that Matt's been drilling over for, you know, like a year, a little over a year now. But basically, everything I've been designing for the systems has been based around their stuff. So it worked out really well that we finally were able to get this partnership. Yes, exactly. And so now that we are officially partnered together, they invited us out to their headquarters in Hanover, Maryland. Their U.S. Hand. Their uh, U.S. <laughs> because yes, they do have Dutch headquarters yeah, yeah. too, uh, which was very kind because there are a number of items. I mean, of course there's gonna be a number of items on the boat, but the things that we're going to be needing immediately, like it was so sweet. They set out a display table for us so they could show us like we, you know, been sending emails back and forth about these products. Why don't you pick them up, play with them, see how they're gonna work for you. Yeah, and it's, it's so many of the things that I'm doing are designed where I have a millimeter or two of clearance on either side. Um, so actually being able to handle them and measure them myself so instead of just looking at the PDFs or the CAD uh, was really, really useful. And I, the takeaway from that was uh, just just figuring out for sure that these things are going to fit within the areas that we are laying out. Yeah. So I think the first things that we're going to be um, receiving and installing are um, inspection ports. Yep, for our tanks. And then also oh, flush deck hatches. That is... <laughs> They're gonna look so cool and we got to yeah go there and um, kind of like play with them in person and imagine them getting installed in the boat. Yep, we got to make a mold for these to to uh, recess them within the deck. So actually being able to put my hands on them and instead of just looking again at the, the pure numbers of it, to actually physically look at it and see exactly how I want to put the, the drains in them and all that kind of stuff. So that was extremely useful. And then the big thing Oh was, my gosh, one that they sent us home with. Yes, was a uh, electric toilet. Uh, it seems like the most random thing in the world. But For us to get excited about. <laughs> yeah. But if you saw one of the, I don't know if it was last week's episode or the week before, how much trouble we were having moving forward because we didn't know the dimension of the toilet we were going to use. So like to get our hands on one, yeah. uh, it made my week, my month. Yeah, we were, uh, we quickly came back and put it in place and started tweaking around uh, exactly how that's going to be laid out. Because again, we're talking about millimeters of clearance on these different, uh, these different areas and it being able to physically hold on to that and um, uh, see what's going to be the best use of that space was huge. Very so huge. we're very thankful that they did set us home with that. Yes. <laughs> and it was fun too, just like wandering through their warehouse. Some of their things are geared a bit more towards power boats because I think bow thrusters are their biggest. Well, yeah, um, I mean, a lot well, of sailboats, of course, use bow, well, thrusters, bow thrusters too. too but, uh, <laughs> especially, I wish we had one on Elements. So that is their number one thing, but they're basically their systems company. So a lot of people won't necessarily know the name Vetus, but if you buy a, a, a production boat or, or a boat that was produced by professionals, uh, <laughs> most likely it's going to have Vetus products in it. Like I said, the exhaust system is huge. Um, it's been in use for a very, very long time now on um, their system. They do produce engines and generators and that kind of stuff, but their big claim to fame is their bow thruster technology. And it is, yeah, really, really cool. Not something that we need for elements, of course, but, or for, for the new boat, but uh, it is just the I mean. hatches. That was the thing. <laughs> that was what originally got me to contact them were their hatches. They are 
the one hatch that I've had on any of our boats that did not leak yes. or Vita's hatches. I could always trust that one that was never going to need any work. Yep. So that was the reason why I originally contacted <laughs> them was about hatches and then started going through and they have everything else that we could possibly need from pumps to uh, um, holding tanks. Oh my gosh, to, they're hoses. They're yeah. flexible hoses. Yeah. So just uh, it's, it's going to be incredible. You're going to see the name pop up a million times as we're going through this build of uh, things that we're installing with that, that Vetus logo on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so be prepared. Yes. So we are incredibly excited about this partnership. Again, as Matt said, you're going to continue to see them throughout the build because of the catalog yeah. of just so many items that we'll be able to add on. So, Ooh, and, and they're and. also, so they are, um, the parent company is Yanmar, um, which of course we are installing those Yanmar engines. So it kind of tied in well together. Um, and then they also uh, are Maxwell, which are windlasses. Yes. So you will see a Maxwell windlass being installed as well, which we are very excited about um, too. So that is a, another item that they are huge for yes, in the very US well known now. For. Yeah. So thank you so much to Vetus for talking to us over this past year and collaborating with us on this project. It means the world to us. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just expect to see a lot of their amazing products coming up in our future videos. I have to say, last night we finally checked off the list. I think one of the projects that Matt and I have been dreading the most, and that is in the engine bay areas. There's these structural webbings that go in, and we had to glass the top and the bottom sides, and the sides underneath, like closest to the bottom of the hull, extremely hard to get <laughs> to get ourselves under there and doing a proper job but it actually worked out okay and now we have those done so we get to uh, keep working further in the area and focus on now the bedroom or the beds so we're getting those figured out exactly how we want them to set based on the space and I think the kind of mattress we eventually want to put in there all right and now that we've got the webbing in yesterday we're going back into what I'm not considering it more the engine compartment, but the bedroom here on uh, port side. Guest side. Guest bunk. Uh, so quick rundown. The original plan, the original design for this was to fit a conventional queen size mattress in here, which the dimensions for a queen size is 80 inches long by 16 inches wide. Um, over the course when they were doing the engineering for it and some of the final design things, the bulkhead that holds the chain plate got moved aft a little bit. This, this bulkhead did not move at all. So what they did is they scrunched it down to 79 inches now from bulkhead to, to this side. A conventional mattress would struggle to fit in here. It'd be a little bit too tight, even if you did try to compress it and get that extra inch off of there. But the other issue is this is our engine bay here. So we need to be able to get access to that. The Vision does a great job with it, where they have a, a, a platform that raises up and from hinge at the back basically and allows you to climb in. It worked well on the Vision because they're wide hulls, very, very wide hulls, and they were able to drop the mattress way down. So when it lifts all the way up, you still have full access to the engine. If we were to do that same thing here, and with the hinge point being about this part, by the time it got up, there would only be a little small crawl space between the bulkhead here and the, the aft part of the engine. It just wouldn't work well for our scenario. So we've been kind of going around, kicking around different ideas. What we're planning now is a clamshell setup. So it'll be split down the middle and either side will fold up and give us full access. We have full height then, we have full access to the engine down below. Well, what that does for our mattress is, again, we can't use a normal off-the-shelf queen-size mattress because it needs to be split in the middle. They do make a split model, but again, we have that length constraint so we need something a little bit shorter than that. We've been hemming and hawing about different options. We can do what are called um, narrow twin mattresses. They are exactly 30 inches wide, but they're 75 inches long. And we can do two of those. But to do that, we would actually have to keep the base of the bed at about this height where this, this bulkhead is to get us our full 60 inches width here because it has to go over this chamfered panel, this piece here. We lose quite a bit of headroom when doing that. Um, so now what we're thinking is going with just conventional foam, same thing we've been using for a decade now on our boats, um, living aboard those. 
in splitting that and making the mattress herself. What that's going to allow us to do is we can drop this down, then drop the bed down to a comfortable height. Um, and then over on this side, which is just the side or on the opposite flip it, the other yeah. side, flip it there, um, we can we can adjust it and cut it down to uh, so it fits over the top of this chamfer piece. And then we can get our full 60 inch width, drop it down a little bit, we get our headroom back. Um, and the fact that it's foam, we can cut it to that 79 inches so it fits right where we need it to. Uh, I think that's going to be the best solution. Is that what we're now thinking, Jess? I think so, yeah. Okay. It's been a struggle trying to figure that out. Um, what works best in and we can't really compare it to the factory on this one because the one that they produce so far has been with outboard motors so they have no engines here they really don't need access often so it's just got a typical little hatch so we kind of had to design what we're going to do that gives us the best access all right so at this height if we're to do it at the top of this bulkhead all the way across the table, we are looking at so that is basically 63 inches. So that's three inches extra of what we need to be. Mm -hmm. um, we could taper in that edge and bring it in so it, it's running kind of flush there. Okay. Or we drop this down, which then brings us to our 60 inch width along the bottom. Pull that to 60 inches. Okay. All right, to have our full 60, we would have to be right at this height. Okay, so what kind of header are we looking at? About 47 inches? So 47 inches to the bottom. If we use a conventional mattress, we're going to use an 8 inch tall mattress. So that brings us up to 39. 39. Still plenty of room for activities. Uh, this is a guest hall. No one's uh -huh. doing any of that crap over here. So if you're sitting like that, and it's a really, really firm mattress. Very firm mattress. Yeah. I still have. You're at, you have basically four inches above your head. It's not a ton. If we go to a full mattress, then there's no reason we have to stick with the uh, the 60 inch width because we can taper it along the hall line. Exactly. Yeah, there's really no limit. We can yeah. conform it to the space. Yeah, so we're not really losing too much by dropping these bulkheads down a few inches. As long as we're alright with going with a full mattress instead of a. It's conventional. Conventional. Some people absolutely love the foam. I, they're okay. I haven't found one that I absolutely love. What else? If I could get for? the mattress from the uh, Marriott at Ford's Colony in Williamsburg. Life would be grand. Oh yeah, that was like 16 inches, 17 <laughs> yeah. inches. Yeah. <laughs> we could totally get that in yeah. here. Yeah. Then there'd be no room for activities. Stop it. Uh, no headroom. Huh. It's easier to run everything. It's just. We just follow the plans yep. instead of where it gets to the point where you get to choose your own adventure. <laughs> choices are bad, okay? Yeah. Yeah, the choices take a long time. Yeah. Uh. So as you can see, we still have some decisions to be made to figure out exactly where the bed is going to be placed in here, its height, and relation to like, what's going to be a little shelf here, um, how it's going to open, fore and aft. So I think Matt's going to play around a bit with some of the boards fitting them, cutting them. Um, obviously we're not going to like just cut this down to see how it works because it's really a pain in the ass to build it back up, but just kind of get ourselves a better idea for the area. space that we'd have if we were to do a solid one-piece mattress that we were able to tilt up kind of like the hood of a car and climb in to work on the engine. Because of our overhead height and how much space if the mattress were to come up here, when it gets pushed, when this raises the mattress ends going to get pushed over to kind of closer to this area here because it's going to pinch down at the bottom. 
Um, in doing so, then it's going to end up impacting this one. It'll probably press against the ceiling and about our max angle that we would be able to get. If you look at that, what that means for engine access, if I were to have to climb over this bulkhead to get into the engine area back here, that would be a very, very limited area to, to climb in. So what we're thinking is like bomber doors where they open up kind of a clamshell type of thing, and then that will allow full access to the engine. They will go to pretty much a vertical position, and you have full, complete access from the top then. Is it? Inside out. Okay. We have got some incredibly exciting news because we have got an incredible partner that we have partnered with. <laughs> As per usual. Yeah. Okay. It's about what I Com expect. Company that we've partnered with. 